Hello everyone, welcome to Delicious Home and Garden. This is part two of our series on Palmyra. Part one was when we bought the cuttings and now we're going to pot them up. I'm going to show you how to pot them, what kind of soil, how to water, and much more. also going to be potting up two more purchases from two other vendors on Etsy. Now let's get started. This is the company I purchased the cuttings from, the Palmyra Cuttings. She's out of California and you can find her on Etsy. Repotting my Plumeria cuttings that I purchased online. There is a video of my experience of purchasing online. If you'd like to look at it, um, just like and subscribe and you will see all the videos at your disposal. So for today, to repot these plumerias, um, you will need some rocks or sticks and that is to stabilize the plumeria once we've potted it. Um, you will also need some, I have clay balls here, but you can use little bricks, broken pottery, anything that will help to give about a one inch drainage at the bottom of the pot. Um, for plumerias, you definitely need a heavy pot. And the reason is these stalks are really heavy. So that's why we're using the bricks to hold them in place. You can use uh, twigs on either side, as I said earlier, and because they do shift in the wind and once they're rooting, they don't like to be moved, okay? So I use rocks, you could, you'll you feel free to use whatever. Um, Plumeras like it hot, so that's why I use the rocks because the rocks heat up and in turn heat up the soil. Also good to stabilize them and once they're established, I usually cover the top with little pebbles. So entirely up to you. Um, these are the pots I'm gonna be using. Now you can see these pots are dirty. They all have to be washed. The bases have to be washed because we don't wanna transfer any bacteria, disease, pests, or anything else to these cuttings. They're very susceptible at this stage. It's just, think of it as a, like a baby plant. Okay, we're gonna be using vermiculite and perlite. I also have some Adama here. It's up to you. You can use any kind of clay or, um, it's just to create um, less moisture in the pot. I don't want the pot to hold on to water. I want them to have a good drink and then as the rooting continues, I don't want it to sit in water. So you can omit this part, but you definitely need the perlite and the vermiculite. Okay, and we're gonna be using a big pot uh, bag here. It's a 8.8 .8 liter bag of potting soil, which also has some perlite in it. Um, but we're gonna add more because we want drainage. That's the key. All right, you will also need some sort of rooting hormone, entirely up to you um, what brand you want to use, but I'm going to be using this brand here. Um, I've used it many times before and I've had much success. Okay, so I'll get started washing the pots and we'll be back. Our plant pots and bottoms are washed nice and clean. Um, I just washed it with some soap, soapy water. That's it, make sure it was rinsed nicely. And now we can get started. So the first part we're gonna need to do is mix our soil that we're gonna use. So I told you this was regular potting mix, indoor potting mix. And you can see it does have some perlite in it, but not enough for this purpose. If we want success with our 
plumeria plants, we have to try our best to stop it from rotting because that's the main thing that happens. We need to give it accurate amounts of water and heat for it to root for us. Okay, so now to this, we're gonna add, this is half a cup, by the way. So to it, we're going to add one, two, that's one cup. And that's two cup. And I told you this was an 8.8 .8 liter. I'm just gonna cut this. A lot of people want to know how I found the love for plants, but I think I always liked plants growing up, but um, starting seeds, I remember my grandpa used to have a little kitchen garden, and then when he migrated to Canada, so I'm going to also do the same amount here, two cups. When he migrated to Canada, he also had a small garden. So from my memory, most of the stuff I know about plants kind of stems from there. Uh, my parents were not big gardeners. They did have a few plants around the yard, but all in all, I think that's where it comes from. Um, and my grandma was a great cook. So my grandfather would just go to the yard and pick things for her to make for dinner. And that's kind of the lifestyle I've tried to create here with my family, is we try to grow as much food as we can and eat it and cook it and enjoy it. I think it's important for people to know where your food comes from. But today we're not talking about food, today we're talking about plumeria and flowers, which is also important because I think while vegetable plants and stuff feed our body, flowers feed our soul, right? So I've given that a good mix. I should have picked a bigger container, but it's okay, this will work. You'll see how fast all of this will go. Now what I need to do is to put some water on it. I'm just getting some warm water. You can use hot water too. Um, when the water's warmer, it's easier for the soil to absorb it. This is an important part too, because this is the only watering this is gonna have for the next three to four weeks. We're not going to water it. It seems harsh, but that's the way it has to be. That's the way it has to be done. If we water it too much, we could stand to rot everything, okay? So, I did forget the Adama, so I'm gonna put that in now. <clears throat> this is a little heavier than the vermiculite and the um, perlite because it's an actual mineral. Super. And I'm just gonna do the same amount. These plants grow in Hawaii and they love this kind of soil, this Adama. And it's not totally necessary. If you can find it at your garden center, then go ahead. Um, it's used a lot in bonsais and things like that. And 
fertilization, that's another thing we should talk about. Am I gonna fertilize this? No. I'm gonna wait till I start to see leaves forming. And once I have about three or four leaves, then I'll do light fertilization with eggshell. And if you wanna see how to do that, I have other videos. Um, how I use my eggshells is basically I just take the eggshells and I cook them off in the oven. Then I pound it in a pestle and mortar, or you can um, do it in a blender. However you do it, you just powder it up. And I use it as fertilizer for most of my indoor plants and orchids, and they love it. Okay, so now I can feel, and I squeeze the soil, no water comes out, but it holds together. You see that? Just enough. Kind of like when you're making pastry. For any of you that make pastry, you want to squeeze it together, but with just the slightest touch, it falls apart. That makes the flakiest pastry. Turns out, it makes the best soil for our plumeria. So that's it. Soil is prepared. Now we're going to do our potting. All right guys, so I've went ahead, I've done some cleanup. I removed everything that I don't need, uh, which is the perlite, vermiculite, the uh, dama. And now I've prepared myself by doing some paperwork. And by that, I mean the, putting the date on a tag and the name of the plant, okay? The seller did do a great job in labeling them. She wrote it on the actual um, cutting itself but once I put it in the dirt that might be lost so I think it's a good option to remember when I planted it and then the type of uh, plant it is. It also has a cup here of warm water that I'm going to dip the plant uh, cutting into and then I'm going to roll it in this dust the rooting powder and put it into the pot okay so first we're going to start by putting a couple of these on the bottom just an inch layer nothing too fancy and you'll notice I have different size pots and that's because some of the cuttings are really large and some are small so I had to make use also of what I had all right so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the soil in and you can feel by the addition of the Adama it's also weighted down the soil a little, which is nice to hold the cutting, okay? I'm going to go an inch above the top of the line here. So when I press that down, not too firmly, but just enough to hold it, okay? Then I'm gonna get my trusty hole maker. Spatula, back end of the spatula. Just gonna turn it. That makes a perfect hole. And I can feel that I'm down to the bottom there, okay? And I'm gonna just put a little bit of soil down at the bottom to cushion the plant. And I'm going to plant in this one. Let me remove this tag so I don't get confused. I'm gonna do whirlwind. So I'm bringing whirlwind in here. This is our whirlwind. I'm gonna check it just last minute for anything. Looks good. Dip it in the water, shake it off. Okay, and now I'm going to turn it in the powder. trying to do it at an angle where you guys can see and that I can also get a good coverage. Hopefully 
it's benefiting both of us. <laughs> So I think it's good coverage here. I'm gonna just put a little bit more here. Get that a rinse off. Okay, I'm gonna put this beautiful girl in this hole here. And press down. secure it. Now you can still see it's a little wobbly. We don't want that. We want to secure it, okay? I'm going to add some more to bring it back up to an inch. Now you can understand why I didn't fully compact the soil before because when I compact it once the stem is in, I want it to hold it together, okay? This is right about where I want it. Okay. Now I'm going to secure it with the rock. It's right there. One right here. And maybe a small one here. that into the soil okay nice looking very good feeling very sturdy and last but not least I'm just gonna give it about four teaspoons of, of water on the top okay and if I feel like it needs water in the next three weeks, that's the only amount of water I would give it, about four to five teaspoons of water, no more than that, okay? God willing, shall grow and be healthy. And last but not least, what did we forget? We forgot our tags. Thanks if you were screaming the tag, the tag. I heard you, okay? World wind done. We're gonna do the next one. I did grow these before, Pomeria, and uh, if you didn't watch the previous video on how I bought it online and the process um, that I went through with that, um, I did. I, I'll tell you again, I did grow the Plumeria. However, I live in Canada and um, we had stepped away for a weekend and they got stuck in the frost. So if you live in Canada, you know what that's like. So this year I am going to still, of course, take them outside because they, they need to be outside. If I need to be outside, they need to be outside. So they do enjoy that. They thrive out there. But what I'll do this year is bring them in probably mid August towards the last week of August. I won't wait till September because that's when the weather gets kind of iffy. <laughs> so I just live and learn, right guys? You live and you learn. I'm not by any means a master gardener or anything. I'm just sharing the knowledge and stuff I learned from trial and error and reading and speaking to other elderly people you can learn a lot from your grandparents and parents and neighbors so also purchasing online i found a lot of knowledge because the sellers were willing to speak with me and answer my questions which hard to find at the garden center these days very hard you know everybody's too busy you ask them to order a plant they don't have time what you get is what you get and that's the kind of thing we, there's no more customer service when I order online 
not only sometimes they send me a card sometimes they throw me a free cutting here and there um, one lady the lady I bought this plumeria from um, I'll post her her uh, Etsy page at the end of this video um, she sent me fertilizer you know I find that sometimes stores get too compliant and too um, resting on their laurels that they don't think about customer service anymore that's not important to them you know and plants are like it's like if you took a baby home you feel so helpless when they're dying and they do they don't know how to help you the person that knows about it's always out of the store because it's only one person that they employ that's actually got some kind of knowledge about plants and even that's even if you know and like they don't give you any kind of care package or I have bought seeds from people on Etsy and they send me how to care for it how to plant it you know they're willing to answer questions about it if I if I have any I find it's very good customer service on the other hand you still have to be aware of where you're buying from look at the ratings look at the stars ask questions before you buy if they're willing to speak with you then you know chances are they're probably good people right they're willing to answer your questions and answer it in a timely manner then chances are they're probably really really good people so we're gonna move ahead and plant the rest of them this one was chemo where did I put the tag for that I'll grab that I'm gonna go ahead and pot all of them up and then I'll show you what it looks like once it's done but you pretty much get the process which is drainage at the bottom soil in make the hole water powder in press it down then add the rest of water to bring the pot an inch above and secure with your rocks or twigs um, you can put two chopsticks and then secure it that way um, on either side like they do for trees you know they put those rebars down and they tie it you can do that also but I find this is pretty and it double duty because remember I told you I'm gonna put this in a sunny spot and it's gonna heat up and heat the soil, which will in turn um, help the rooting process, okay? Okay, so I can see here, I have four of them potted up nicely. They're nice and sturdy. Um, I did run out of soil, as you can see over here, but what I'm gonna do is mix some more. I just wanna say something to you. I don't wanna scare you about watering it. If you're going to overwater, do it at this point and then don't water for three or four weeks okay make sure the soil is nice and moist I did end up putting more water on a few of them because as I got to the bottom of this mixture that I made it was a bit drier so the soil does need to be well saturated this is what your roots are going to be drinking out of once they pop out and you need to make sure like this soil here is a little bit too dry. So I will add probably half of this bottle to it and warm water, not cold water. Okay guys, whenever you water your plumeria, use warm to room temperature water. Never a good idea to water tropicals in freezing cold water, your orchids or whatever it is. All right, we'll come back and I'll show you their final spot. So I went ahead and I potted the other plants that I bought online. Um, if you look at um, purchasing plants online, um, once you like and subscribe my channel, you'll see some other sellers that were pretty fantastic and offered me a lot of education and knowledge about their plants, how to take care of it, um, answered all my questions. I was really pleased and when the plants came, they were in excellent condition. Um, Happy Fly was one of them, and she even gave me this little extra um, Christmas cactus. I do have a, quite a collection of Christmas cactuses, so 
I really appreciated that along with this beautiful note, which I've now tied to the plant so I won't forget. Um, I'll show you the other stuff we got going upstairs, which is the Palmyra, and we'll close off this video. Hey, I just wanted to show you a quick little thing that I do to all my bulbs and seedlings because they're the ones that tend to get a lot of um, mold and mildew. So I'm just gonna, because the soil is gonna be a while before the soil starts being of use to the plant because it has to start developing the root. So this is something I do. It's a equal parts cinnamon and equal parts baking soda. And it's just a light dusting over the soil and that stops it from getting mold and mildew. Okay, you only need to do it at this stage because it's waiting for the plant to be established really that causes the mold and mildew because once the plant starts using the soil and start, everything starts to circulate, then you, there's no need to, um, to get mold. It's, it's very rare, but if your plants ever do get mold, it, you need to stop watering and use that mixture, one part baking soda to one part cinnamon and sprinkle it lightly over the soil and don't water until like the plant totally dries out. Somebody's knocking at our door. Um, these guys I'm going to put with my ginger and I have some taro that I'm rooting and some turmeric. So the bulbs I'm gonna put in there cause they like a little bit of humidity and, and, uh, and heat. So I'm gonna be putting that there. And these guys I'm just gonna to add to a section of my house plants where I have my Hoyas and not too much bright light, not too much direct light, but bright light, that's what I meant to say. Bright light, but not direct light. So here they are, <laughs> looking like little dried sticks, <laughs> but it's okay. It'll be for a little while, and before you know it, they'll be blooming. I just wanted to show you about the watering. So I went ahead and I watered. As long as there's no water sitting there, then you've watered enough. That's how you know how much. So this one here, I can show you. You can see a little bit of water coming there, that's perfect. As long as it's not sitting in water, then you've done enough watering, okay? So here we go. They all look beautiful. And there will be a third video and a fourth. So the third video will be basically to show you how to fertilize, how I fertilize, when to fertilize, but we won't be doing that until these guys get leaves. And at that point, I guess we can also do it. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I was saying, um, it was my doorbell. Um, at that point, we can probably do an update and we can see how they're doing and maybe if we're getting any flowers at that point. Um, it'll be a few months before that, maybe about two to three months. So, maybe like July or so, um, we can look into that. Also, I wanted to just give them a little bit of neem oil, just to, at this point, because um, last time when I did it, I did encounter some spider mites. So I'm just gonna do some preventative measure with the neem oil. I, I mixed it in this old uh, um, air freshener bottle. Um, for the neem oil, it's about six drops of neem oil to three drops of soap so in this bottle here i have 12 drops of neem oil and i have six drops of soap so it's uh um one one to two parts okay neem oil being uh, the the more ingredient there the one that's the most so i'm just gonna spray the tops that's where the spider mites like to feast because that's the new growth. And in between the crevices, 
see the crevices there I'm just gonna give it a good spray because they like little nooks and crannies to you know everybody wants to live right and I don't blame them but I really like my plants and I'd like to keep them nice and healthy right so I'll probably do this neem oil again in about a week just to ensure because it's really crucial at this point and the plant is really at a delicate state right so give them a little mist and we'll see you guys soon thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you in part three update have yourself a wonderful season and uh God bless you. Please like and subscribe. This is part two of a part four series. And at the end of this video, you will see the Etsy purchases I made and the companies I um, purchased from. Thanks again for watching. God bless and we'll see you next time.